and we are back my living hole friends i'm still a hot mess but that is okay i'm not looking like a boss babe however anybody else getting kind of tired of that people profiting off of like how to make six figures and really like what inform anyway Anyway guys, so I've made a previous video on how to turn your passion into a full-time position or full-time gig and that's really essentially what I've done with Living Whole and I just think that there needed to be a more pointed list and there are 10 things that I think you need to do before starting your business. So we can talk about passion and I read in a really, really amazing book called Company of One by Paul Jarvis. I highly, highly recommend. I'll pop it up right here. You need to get this book if you are planning on opening your own business or following or pursuing your passion. So there are 10 things that you need to do before starting your business. The first thing, I kind of talked about it in my passion video, but the first thing is to develop a powerful message. What is your intent? Do you want to help people live their whole life like I am, like my whole life is your whole guide to health? Or do you just want to sell the best damn backpacks that you can? What is the customer problem that you're trying to solve? Uh, what are customers going to be willing to pay for? And this is called value proposition. And it's, it's important and it's something that when I started Living Whole, I was a little muddled in. I knew it was a hobby and I was transitioning it, transitioning it, transitioning it into something bigger than that. And even now, as Living Whole has progressed from January of 2019 until this point in near the end of July. I have refined why and how my business will be operating but also financially successful. So it's kind of a continued growth based on that powerful message and that intent or that purpose that I'm trying to provide. So the second thing that you have to do before you embark on this is to focus on your customer. This is also called niching down and fully understand the market that you are trying to either break into or focus on. This even boils down to understanding the research behind the demographics and the people that will be buying your pro your your product or whatever service you're providing. You need to understand kind of what they what they value. Are you selling to people that value fast fashion or are you selling to someone that values a quality product that will that like Patagonia that you'll only purchase one in many years like who what's your demographic so you really have to fully understand that the step three is, is to start small and to grow and this is where step three you will have to have read company of one before you decide it's time to grow and I think this is very vital in knowing what is your, you know, determining what your upper limits are. What, at what point are you going to be happy? And when is just growth for the sake of growth actually detrimental? It really, I mean, that's, that's the best way to put that. And guys, I, I seriously cannot recommend reading Company of One by Paul Jarvis. And if you have the time, Essentialism by Greg McCowan. Two things that had I read two and a half years two and a half three years earlier after I realized I'm gonna turn this full-time hobby into a true business this is my intent and my purpose I wish I would have read those books step four tip four, whatever we want to call this you also have to understand your own strengths and weaknesses and how you truly operate um, what is your true time available and how do you utilize that the other thing is knowing your strengths and weaknesses is knowing when to ask for help so that is a huge component of this you need to understand when do I when do I feel I need an accountant or a lawyer or an insurance agent maybe even a marketing specialist where do I prevail and where do I need that little extra help because as living whole I've besides I made my first what I made my first website through Squarespace but I realized it didn't have the capabilities that I needed to so I reached out to professionals as well as all my marketing all my builds all my ebooks those things that you see online in the marketing sense pre presence for living whole as of now I'm doing all of that 
I am my own accountant until tax season and then I have a very specialized person that I reach out to that handles all that but I manage all my organization all, all the, that aspect of it. I've reached out for trademarking and things like that so you have to know when what your strengths and weaknesses are and then go from there. I just now realized I have like a glow and I hope this doesn't ruin ruin this video. Ruin it. Anyway. <laughs> it's because I have notes down here. I'm still that still that person. I'm looking at the viewfinder, not at you guys. Okay guys, so <laughs> enough of that. Step five is you have to surround yourself with advisors and mentors, people that will offer you great advice and people that you can bounce ideas off of and brainstorm. Jade Terminello with Company Club uh, just recently did an interview on their SoundCloud and it talks about lateral mentorship. And this principle, I have never heard it coined or talked about in that way. And just thinking about that principle and thinking about the act of lateral mentorship when you have people that aren't necessarily they're just greater than you but you have like-minded individuals that may not be in the same field or may be doing similar things you have this connection and this this kind of um collaboration in a sense that is both supportive and it's also very provoking and I find that too even when I'm talking with my husband about business things about direction we'll kind of chat about things going on as we're driving to Fayetteville and I find that I just spent 30 minutes talking to him about something that I've maybe been thinking about or kind of struggling about, but just the act of thinking through it, that that act of critical thinking and conversation, that lateral mentorship, it's incredibly important to have those people that you can gain skill and experience from, but also support each other because you are as much of that asset for them as they are to you. So it's an incredible kind of, it's just a good thing. You gotta, you gotta have it. Other, whatever number we're on, you need to write a business plan and you need to know your numbers. This is both in budget, but also quantity of product, upper limit. You have to understand the backing of your business in order to monitor and adjust based on whatever's happening or take very calculated risk. A very calculated risk, it wasn't really a risk, it was a choice, was that I decided to come back home after travel nursing for five years and open my office in downtown Fort Smith. And so we live in this absolutely beautiful environment, um, very rural. And so as of now, because of the population of the city that we live in, we don't have internet guys. So I took that calculated risk decision to have my office in town so that I could have fiber, um, but, well, I had to, it was just, that's what it was. And that was a part of my business plan and knowing that I was going to take this not only full time, but also knowing my my numbers and my, my budget. And there are times where you're going to be making decisions on the fly, so if you understand how the different components of your plan work and what won't work or what are your hard no's, then you are in a really good position to make good decisions that long-term will drive awareness, will drive success. So that's that one's a big one. And business plans can be very intimidating. I suggest that you Google them and look at examples. You can pick and choose from models that you see from different businesses. I've talked to people, how they were doing things, what about this, what about that. You also within this, as much as this is going to be your passion or your dream or you're the Jaclyn Hill and you decide that it's your destiny to own a makeup brand or makeup line, whatever, there are no entitlements. <laughs> you cannot underestimate this you will have to work hard and work longer than you probably initially thought that you had to. Being a small business owner or being a business owner is one of the hardest jobs. And so much nowadays we see this highlight reel and this is why this boss babe strategy and earn six figures and passive income and this and that, you are gonna work. And I probably work 
40 to 50 hours a week on living whole. Even though there are points and there are parts of my business plan and my, my model and what I'm doing that feel like work, a large part of it I'm so fortunate to be doing what I love and have turned my whole life into this that a lot of times it doesn't really feel like work. It's my lifestyle, it is my life choice. I love it. I do. I just absolutely love it. So this is kind of the second part of that is understand there's no entitlements, but also have a passion for what you're doing because it's going to be hard. And that whole boss babe strategy, yes, we need to empower each other, but people are getting lost in that. It's not all about the, you can share and scroll and like all those motivational statements you want, but if you're not doing the work, it doesn't matter. So I think we'll end on that. Have a passion for what you are doing because even, even as a business owner and this being my whole life and whatnot, um, there's parts of this can, that can be very, very lonely, can be very um, frustrating and there's sometimes a lot of anxiety associated with it and sometimes it just feels like there's not enough hours in the day that I'm going to achieve everything that I want to or I start looking at the bigger picture and not looking at the things that I just need to get done that day and so you will have you will have success but you are going to have lots and lots of letdown and if you're not fueled by that passion and you don't have that love for what you're going to be doing it's going to be so hard so the last step on a positive note, on a positive note, have a passion for what you're doing and pursue it. But in the grand scheme of things, these are the things that you need to step by step do in starting your own business. And not everybody is cut out for it. There, and there is also nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with people working their nine to five and clocking out and going home for the day absolutely no nothing wrong with that so if that is your life decision if that is just making you happy and you live your life outside of that hell yeah own that so don't get caught up in comparing yourself to everybody or everybody's highlight reel or feeling like you have to open your business to be successful you don't you have to do what makes you happy and it and if starting a business makes you happy and you have a passion and you want to do it these are my tips. These are the things, these aren't even my tips. These are the things that you need, you need to do. I hope that helps. Kind of longer video than I anticipated and he's about passed out. So, 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 so. I got some new plant things too. They are adorable and I love them. And I think that's it. We just finished staining our deck. So if you guys, I'll show you that. It's a pretty night too. I hope I don't. We have a couple wasps. I like to hang out here because it's so pretty. It's really bright. So, look how nice it is. We just finished staining. Still on the step ladder. But, yeah, buddy. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Anyways, guys, this is. Oh, look at that. Anyway, so there's a hummingbird. <laughs> I'm all like freaking out. I'm gonna go inside now. What are you doing? Come on. What are you doing?